Good morning. Good to see you today. Welcome home. We are so glad that you are here and you're with us this morning. I want to just celebrate with you. I don't know if you heard uh, about Faith Promise, what Steve had just mentioned. Sometimes we use terms that if you don't grow up around the church, you don't know what they mean. And many of us may not even know what Faith Promise is. But Faith Promise is an opportunity for us to promise in faith to help pay those who are all over the world spreading the gospel. And so our goal is $32,000 for this year. Last week we had pledged $8,000, and this week we're already up to almost $16,000. So let's give God a hand for that. That is awesome. And so if you missed last week, I shared last week that if we didn't promise in faith to, to pay our missionaries and to resource our missionaries, the gospel wouldn't be spread around the world. So we encourage you to think about um, how you will give and promise in faith to help us in that endeavor uh, as we hit that goal this year. Uh, We're we're glad to be here on Palm Sunday and just sharing with you. uh, uh, Today we're going to be learning about it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Say it with me. It's not how you start. Uh, Yesterday, Luke and Noah and myself and my dad, we went fishing yesterday and uh, Whitney wanted to go shopping with Grace, and so she said, you need to take the kids. And I said, well, Luke? And he, she said, yep. And I said, okay. And so uh, we all got in the truck, and we headed towards the, the pit. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I haven't got to go. I haven't been fishing in a long time, and I just want to fish hard. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be pulling baits out of the tree and all this kind of a thing. And so I kind of went in with this bad attitude about it. And uh, what happened over the course of three hours was, or three or four hours, however long we were there, is that Luke hung in there the whole time. I mean, his, he got his bait in the tree. He got moss on his thing. He got tired. He was wading through weeds. And I kept telling him, will not you just give me your pole and you can just play around and I can fish. And what happened was over time, I started thinking, he's, he's doing this. I watch him over there, and he's casting, and he's bringing it back. And we got home last night, and Whitney said, how'd he do? And I said, he did really good. I was proud of him, and I felt bad. I said, because (laughs) he finished. He's five. He started, and he finished. We have retirement parties for people. We don't have celebrations when people begin. We don't say, hey, you started your first day today. Let's have a big party. Hey, you're going to start weight loss today. Everybody come around and we're going to get started. We don't celebrate that much beginnings. What we celebrate is good endings. Amen? And that's what we're talking about today. And that's what Jesus was trying to tell the disciples what he was, God was trying to tell Israel in the Old Testament, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. And Jesus was constantly trying to find ways to get people to pay attention to him. When I was in St. Louis, uh, there was an old pastor there, and he ended up passing away a few years ago, but his name was Udell Moss. Old man, some of you have been around the church for a while, have heard me tell this story. If you don't know this story, Udell just had a passion to tell the gospel to people, to tell people about Jesus, but people wouldn't, didn't want to listen. People just, for whatever reason, didn't, he had a hard time getting them to listen. And so he started learning the yo-yo. And he began to learn the yo-yo and learn the yo-yo, and he got to be really good at it, and he could do all these different kinds of things with it. And he would go to these trailer parks or these just parks in general or just different places where there were lots of people. And he was trying to tell, he focused on children, okay? He wasn't a guy in a van with, a, with some candy. He was trying to tell them about Jesus. And he would start doing this yo-yo. People weren't listening to what he was saying, but they were mesmerized by the yo-yo. And they would come over. And while he was doing the yo-yo, He would say, you know, life has kind of got its ups and downs, the good times and the bad times. And they're like, tell me more. (laughs) And he would use that and tell them about Jesus. Jesus did that same thing. People wouldn't pay attention to what he had to say, 
so he would find a blind guy and heal him. People wouldn't listen to what he was trying to tell them, so he would walk on the water. But while he was healing people and while he was walking on water, while people were touching his garment and being healed, while these blind people could now see, while all these things are going on and, and, and it's almost like juggling, right, or the yo-yo, while people are watching this, he's talking to them about the kingdom of heaven because their context was the kingdom of earth, kingdom of sin, kingdom of me. And Jesus was saying things and doing things that they had never seen before. And he couldn't get them to listen to him, so he would do these different things. It wasn't about the signs and the wonders and the miracles. It was about what he was trying to tell them about who he was. He couldn't just tell them that he was full of power. He had to show them. And he finishes up his last miracle, the crescendo. What do you call it? The grand finale, right? Last week we talked about it. If you weren't here, Lazarus, this guy, he'd been dead four days, stinking dead. Not stink dead, stank dead. Past stink. And nobody had done what Jesus was going to do. And nobody had seen Jesus do what he was getting ready to do. And he's telling them about the kingdom of heaven. And he's telling them about his power, and how they can have eternal life and have abundant life. I have come that you might have life and have it to the fullest. But they weren't listening to what he was saying. They were listening to the yo-yo. But he, was, he knew that. But he, he was stuck because if he didn't do the yo-yo, no one would listen to him. So he kept doing the miracles. He kept feeding, taking some bread and some fish and multiplying it, healing people. I'm not trying to minimize those things, but the reason he did those things wasn't just to say, wow. It was to get people to understand, I am. I am. And his last sign and wonder before he entered Jerusalem. He had some others after that. He heals the ear, and Adam's going to talk about that Friday, Good Friday. But his last big one that they got their attention, he raises Lazarus from the dead. And the people were awestruck. Wow. You're a king. And people grab palm branches and they begin to say, Hosanna, as Adam said earlier, save us. You're our savior. But they didn't understand what he really came to do. As we unpack this scripture in John chapter 12, verses 12 through 9, verses 12 through 19. They're saying, Hosanna, Savior, and, and people are coming into town. He's riding in on this donkey, this young colt. In fact, there's a very good chance, most likely, this colt had never been ridden before. And I don't ride horses, but I don't know about you. But if you've never been on a, if a horse has never been ridden before, it's probably not a horse that I'm going to get on. And yet Jesus but this power and his presence tames this colt donkey and he rides into town and everybody's shouting, Hosanna. And what's interesting is 500 years earlier in the Old Testament, the prophet, Ze prophet Zechariah says, Jesus is going to come into Jerusalem riding on a colt and then it happens and they say, Hosanna, Savior, save us. And there's some things that we can learn about that today. Is, this is Palm Sunday and and we can think about this and some things that can apply to our lives and we can ask ourselves some questions. The first observation is this. Jesus had come to establish his kingdom. Remember when Jesus says, here is how you should pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. Say it with me. Thy kingdom, thy. 
Jesus was saying, you should pray for my kingdom. Not your kingdom. When you pray, here's an example. You should pray for my kingdom, not your kingdom. Jesus came to establish his kingdom. Well, what was his kingdom? I don't know. They were so busy watching this that they didn't realize what he was saying. Jesus is doing this. And he's saying, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Yeah, that's great, Jesus. Show me another miracle. They couldn't get past their own kingdom and their own amazement and their own stuff to ever embrace what he was trying to say. And we do the same thing. You see, we can't build God's kingdom until we stop trying to build our own. Now hear that with me. Hear, read it with me. We can't build God's kingdom. Until we stop. Jesus was trying to say that it's not about the cancer report being good. It's not about the job that you want. It's not about the kids that you want. It's not about 10 fingers and 10 toes. It's not about everything that you desire and that you want happening. Your kingdom, the things that we tend to want to focus on. Jesus says, it's not about that kingdom. This isn't what you're after. It's about whether those things happen the way that you want or not. Thy kingdom come. Your response to whether those things happen or not determines whether you're seeking my kingdom or your kingdom. David writes, unless the Lord builds the house, unless the Lord builds the house, it's builders, and boy, do we build we build savings accounts, we build IRAs, we build net worth, we build a life, we build a resume, we build a portfolio, we build travel sports, we build our kid's going to have every lesson he needs or she needs to be what they are supposed to be, we build, we want our house in the right neighborhood, and we look back and we say, it is good, but unless the Lord builds the house, this is in vain. I worked my butt off and I'm taking that job in Philadelphia. I'm not going to ask you, Lord, if that's what you have. I'm building my house. I'm taking that job. If God's building the house, you don't take the job. You ask him if you should take the job. On paper, it looks like my kingdom. Yeah, but it may not be his kingdom. Your kingdom says take the job with the most money. And God's kingdom says maybe, maybe not. Are we building God's kingdom? Or are we building our kingdom? There's, there's a person that hurt me when I was a child, not physically, not sexually, but emotionally. And I have had no problem forgiving anybody except that one person. And several years ago, I ran into that person. And the Lord basically asked me, figuratively, not literally, if I was... He basically asked me that question. Because my kingdom was, you can go to hell. But God's kingdom was, Kyle, you can't do that. Got quiet in here because you all know what I'm talking about. I can't build his kingdom. 
if I can't put mine down, I can't say go to hell and I forgive you. They don't go together. So when that question came into my ear, these are the action steps that I took. Lord, are you pleased with how I've handled this? And as I listened for his reply, he said, no. What we're tempted to do is say is, Lord, is you, are you pleased with that? Okay, you're not, you don't want to answer me right now. Okay, just do it sometime. In fact, if you have to ask the question, there's a good chance you already know the answer. But there's this last step that's the hardest. I literally, when I saw this person, this spirit just spoke to me. You know, there's grace and there's truth, and there was no grace in the spirit. God was speaking truth to me, and he said, are you going to forgive? And I said out loud, I was on a treadmill somewhere. I said out loud, I know people around me heard me. I said, why do I have to do that? People are like, I don't know what you, what you're talking about. Sorry. I see dead people. (laughs) Then I had to do it. Ask, listen, and act. We also see here in this story another observation besides God's kingdom versus our kingdom. We also see at the beginning of the week, Jesus is riding this, cro- riding this colt. And at the end of the week, he's not riding, he's carrying. But it's not a colt. He's carrying a cross. And I got to thinking about that because at the beginning of the week, they're shouting, Hosanna, Savior. Woo! You know know him? You know that guy over there? He just raised Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus, you remember that? You were dead. Four days dead. You stunk. Hey, that's that lady. She'd been bleeding for 12 years. Just, Hosanna! There's Larry. He was laying beside the pool of Bethesda. And had a, he didn't have a job. He didn't have any prospects. He's walking around. Hosanna! Jesus, you are awesome. God is Good. No cancer. It's clean. My daughter got the job she was looking for. Hosanna. Riding a colt. But if y'all have ever tried doing a diet... The first couple days aren't too bad because you've been overeating so long that your body's finally getting a break and you think it feels pretty good. I mean, I've heard that. (laughs) If I had a drummer up here, but But then you know what it's like in week two or week three or week four. I was there once. And it doesn't feel so good. And you interviewed, and you've interviewed, and you've interviewed, and God ain't coming through like He does for this one over here who is getting what they asked. And when you were 15, you wanted Prince Charming just like she wanted Prince Charming. And she's found her Prince Charming, and you thought he was Prince Charming, and he's not Prince Charming, he's Prince Idiot. And some would say, I'd take Prince Idiot or Prince Charming. I just want somebody. (laughs) 
Hosanna. Hosanna. Forget it. I mean, how does, a, how does Hosanna turn to crucify him? It happens when we're trying to build our kingdom. You see, when cults become crosses, we have a tendency to change our tune. If we were in a Pentecostal church right now, people would be like, amen. Preach, pastor. When cults become crosses, we have a tendency To go from Hosanna, forget it. Kids are at camp. We invest in them to go to camp, not because they're going to stick with it, but because it'll be cemented in there. Even if they don't stick with it and they'll come back to it later. We hope they stick with it. Some of them do, but some of them don't. There's a boy sitting in prison for life for murder, but he's stuck. he's got it in him. He heard it. He heard the message. But when these kids come home, they've been dealing with cults all week at camp. Everybody's feeding them. Everybody's loving them. There's no screaming and yelling. And then they go home, and now all of a sudden, it transitions from a cult to a cross. And after a while, it's like nobody else is over here screaming, Hosanna, I'm just going to stand here by myself and do this. You know what? Forget it. In other words, everybody likes a ride, but nobody wants to carry Everybody likes a colt to ride. I got the job. I found the woman or the man of my dreams. But nobody's willing to say, I'll carry my cross even if I don't. And if you're very old at all, you realize that you can celebrate when it's about riding colts, but understand it's more about carrying crosses. <coughs> Celebrate when you get the job. God is good. Celebrate when you go to the doctor and they say, There's no cancer. God is good. But also celebrate when the cancer has come back. Carry that cross and celebrate when the person you've been praying for, there's still not an answer. Keep carrying the cross. Let's read it. Celebrate when it's about riding colts But understand, it's more about, more about. Jesus, they kind of forgot what he said because of the signs and the wonders. But he said, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I'm talking to you about my kingdom, but I'm showing you your kingdom so you listen to me. Listen, you want to see your kingdom? Here you go. You're healed, you're healed, you're healed. Okay, but listen to what I'm saying. Don't pay attention to what I'm saying. I'm just trying to get more people. Come come here. Listen, It's it's not about riding a colt. It's about carrying crosses. And maybe they didn't hear him when he said it because they were focused on the signs and the wonders. But Jesus said, if any of you wants to be my follower, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your kingdom and take up your what? You can't ride it. You got to carry it. And follow me. 
You see, everyone is a fan at the first of the week in this story. But everybody ran at the end of the week. Everyone is a fan at the first of the week. Hosanna. Hosanna. He healed. Oh, you're not going to take the king's place. You're not going to heal any more sick. You're done with this. You want us to do what? You are doing this so we can figuratively do this? It's easy to be fickle when our eyes are on the temporal. But we can stay faithful when our eyes are on the eternal. If if I'm going to be honest with you, I'd rather be fickle. That person hurt me. And they can go to Kyle. Yeah. I died so they don't have to go there. And if you keep thinking like that, you're going to, I got the picture. Are you a beginning of the week fan or an end of the week follower? Every sport I've ever heard, I've always, almost every coach I've ever had said finish all the time. Finish. Finish. Don't stop just because it's getting hard. Finish. Hey, one more lap. Finish. One more thing of bear crawls, finish. We don't celebrate starting around here, boys. We celebrate finishing. One more, finish. If anybody could talk about finishing, it's Paul. Paul said, here's how you finish. Fix your eyes not on the fact that you're tired. Fix your eyes not on the fact that the cancer's back. Fix your eyes not on the fact that she won't say she's sorry, so why should you say you're sorry? Fix your eyes not on the fact that everything isn't like you had planned. Fix your eyes not on the earthly things, not on the earthly kingdom. Fix your eyes on what is seen, or excuse me, unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is What is unseen is, let's read it. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen. It's not how you start. Doesn't matter what side of the tracks you grew up on. And just because you grew up with Going to church doesn't mean you're going to turn out great. And just because you didn't grow up going to church doesn't mean you're going to turn out poor. Just because you used to do drugs doesn't mean you've got to keep doing drugs. Just because you've been divorced a couple times doesn't mean you've got to keep repeating that pattern. Just because you've been addicted doesn't mean you can't be freed. Just because you've been struggling with this over here doesn't mean you can't find freedom. Jesus says you can finish because he said... It is finished. Earlier in the service, I shared with you about Luke. We went out to this pit and there's brush and thorns and thistles and just, I mean, it was, the fishing's good, but it's kind of hard to get to the spot. As I shared with you, I just wanted him to quit so that I could fish. But you know what happened after a while? His perseverance started to change my thinking. And at first it was annoying me when he said, Dad, I'm stuck. It was annoying me when he kept hollering I'd have to walk halfway around the pond to help him. 
And 20 minutes go by, and 30 minutes go by, and an hour goes by, and this five-year-old, what five-year-old stays out there and just keeps fishing? And he gets moss on his thing, and I'm like, buddy, you don't have to keep doing it. No, Dad, I want to do it too. And that boy, when we were walking through weeds up to our waist, he's walking up to, with them over his head. And he finished the fishing. And there was a point where he hollered out, Dad, I got one. And he would have missed that if I'd have just taken the pole from him. It's not how you start. Luke wore me down with his willingness to keep trying. Somebody could wear down and find Christ if you would just keep carrying your cross. Someone could be encouraged to keep carrying because you're carrying. You've been divorced several times. You have a past that is embarrassing to you but you're here. I tell people all the time, they say, man, I'm struggling with this. And we always look at that as a negative. Struggle implies effort. Struggle implies effort. Don't quit. Keep trying. Keep praying. Keep believing. Because if you do, Dad, I got a bite. Say it with me. It's not how you start. Let's stand together this morning. With every head bowed and every eye closed, we're going to do worship in just a second. But I feel God's talking to me. With every head bowed and every eye closed, what's cool about God is he can customize something for one person at the same time he's customizing it for somebody else. What God may be saying to you, he might be saying something different to somebody else. If you know God's speaking to you with every head bowed and every eye closed, and there's a part of what was just spoken that hits your heart. I want to give you an opportunity just to talk to God about it. What Satan does is he gets us busy right after this sermon on the way out to the parking lot. And then we don't ever finish what God started. So I'm going to ask you with just instruments playing for just a second. Finish the conversation with God. Lord, if there's anybody in here today that you've said something to them, I pray that they would ask, they would listen, and they would o obey. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if God's talking to you today, here's what you can simply say, Lord, I'm a screw up, I'm a mess up, I don't have it all figured out. I bounce back and forth between your kingdom and my kingdom. But Father, today, I choose to follow you. Father, help me to finish 
because others are looking at me for inspiration or discouragement. Father, help us to celebrate today that we're here. Help us to embrace the struggle. Father, may we serve you on Friday, even though it's not Monday. Monday, he was on a colt. Friday, he was carrying a cross. Lord, may we serve you on Friday. May we follow you on Friday the same way that we're willing to follow you on Monday. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you prayed something like that, or you agree with that, just slip your hand up real quick. Amen. We're going to sing a song. It's called Christ is Enough. And whether things are good in your life or not, Christ is enough. Amen.
so the rest of that story, we're on our way home. And Luke says, thank you for taking me, Dad. The kingdom of God is inconvenient. It had been much more convenient to leave him at home. But I'm so glad that I brought him. It would be convenient for us to every week come in here and say, I'm, I'm enjoying this fishing. I'm enjoying this honey hole. I'm enjoying this pond. I'm enjoying this. This is good. Do you want to know what's inconvenient but the kingdom of God? Bring someone with you. Next week is Easter. There are people that you work with. There are people that you live with. There are people that you go to school with. There are people that you get your McFlurry from. Get some of those Easter invite cards and invite them. And if you don't, can't find cards out there, you don't need a card. You can actually talk to them and invite them. It's inconvenient. But it's what he calls us to do. One last thing. Raise your hand if you have a smartphone. I want you to get your smartphone out. And if you have us on Facebook, if you don't like us on Facebook, we're going to challenge you with something really quickly. Okay? Steve put together an Easter promo video. It's less than 60 seconds long. He put it together for people that don't go here. It's not for you because you go here. It's for people that don't go here. And we're going to ask you to share it in just a second. But I would like to see what I'm going to share before I share it. So here's the video, less than 60 seconds. Spell your Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, not Y-O-U-R. Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. I want you to put your invited above your caption and share that. Do it right now. I'm going to hold you hostage. Get your phone and share it. I told Steve to find some Jeopardy music for us, but we couldn't, couldn't find any. Get your phone out. I don't see you grabbing your phone. And click share your invited. If you don't have Facebook, you can get those cards. And even if you do share it on Facebook, you can still get those cards. Let's fill up every chair next week. Not so that we can say every chair is filled, but so more can hear. It's not how you start. It's how he finished so you can finish. Amen? As you're doing that, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Have a blessed Sunday.